The blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or afternoon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. Oh, we shall sing the king when he comes. We shall sing the king. Oh, glory, we let shall us tell the blessed story. We shall sing. Oh 
to be in the house of God yes, and praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Anyone have a spoken prayer request? Remember that? Anyone else? Anyone else? Everybody lost a little one to them, the family up north. Remember uh, Margaret Trowbridge and Karen Nolan, uh, Tom Ealy, Steve Neff, uh, Chuck Craig, my sister, uh, Lou Baker, Amber, and Janine. She's still, still jaundice. She's got a little concern. She's a little bit underweight, but she's, she put on weight. Randy's asked that we pray for her. I told him we would tonight. Be much in prayer for that little child. The Lord made that little child and it can fix whatever's going on with it. Pray for the service. Pray for Jimmy while he's out there on the road. Pray for our nation. Remember that? Anyone else? Remember that? Anyone else? Anyone else? Mrs. Carl, Laura May, Steve, Sue Mullen, Reba, and all her family, Reba and her sister. All those not here tonight. Gwen and Steve. Got a lot out tonight. Remember that? Much in prayer. Anyone else? Remember Glenda and her family, Patsy and her family, Quaid and her family, and my family. Anyone else? Remember that? Anyone else? All unspoken quest for raising your hand, take to the Lord in prayer. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. We do thank you and praise you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to come and worship you again, Lord, tonight. Lord, we come to you tonight on behalf of all these requests, Lord. We know that you're mindful of the need. Lord, you <coughs> tell us in your word, you we know you know what we have need of before we ask or thank you. Father, but I Praise you, Lord, that you're mindful of each and every need. We've made our requests and our petitions known unto you. God, now we're praying the prayer of faith, Lord, that you will move in these needs, Lord, of these people, Lord. Lord, church family, God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, and heal them of their sicknesses, Lord, whatever situation that they're facing. I pray, God, you would come to them speedily, Lord, and lighten the load for them, God, I do pray, Lord, help them. God, I do pray to endure, God, to press on, God, I do ask, Lord, Lord, we come to you tonight on behalf of all those that are sick and afflicted. We pray, Lord, that thy healing touch will come to their life, God, as only you can. Lord, I know that you're able. Tonight, Lord, most of all, we pray for the lost. Lord, no doubt, every one of us here this evening's got somebody lost that's near and dear to us. We just pray, Lord, that that convicting power of the Holy Ghost will come in to their heart, Lord, and pierce it, Lord. Lord, that they will turn their life to you before it's too late. Pray for those tonight that's backslidden, God, upon you that's walked away. I pray, God, that you show them, Lord, that you're still standing there with the arms outstretched, Lord, ready to receive them back to the family of God. Lord, I just ask that you would move. We pray for those tonight that's shut in, Lord, maybe their house, or those that's in the nursing homes and the hospitals, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you would reach down and touch them, Lord, the caregivers, Lord, be with them. Uh, Father, I do pray, Lord Jesus, we know, God, that you're able to do all things. 
God, we pray for our nation. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your hand will be mightily upon us. Lord, Lord, I pray, God, that there will be a, a turnaround, God, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for the leaders of our land, Lord, that they would, the Lord, find true heartfelt salvation, God. I know, Lord, that you would, we're in the palm of your hands, and there's nothing impossible with you, Lord. Pray for those, Lord, that's lost loved ones. God, be with them during this grievous time. Pray for our military, Lord. Lord, that you would strengthen them, Lord. We thank you for our freedoms, God. Pray for Jimmy, Lord. Watch over him and keep him, Lord, out there on the highway. Lord, give him safe travels back home, Lord, we do pray. Father, have your way in this service tonight, Lord. Lord, bless everything that's said and done for your glory, your honor, and your praise. We give you the thanksgiving in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. <coughs> The offering for Brother Johnson. A woman, I
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yes, whatever you praise, whatever we need, that's what we need. Amen. Because He's the great I am. Yeah. If we need a prayer, He can say I am. If we need some peace, He can say I am. Whatever we need, that's what He is. Sometimes I try to tell what Jesus means to me and I find myself searching for words to say just what I
There's a light in the window, table, red in splendor, upon standing by the old barn door. I can see trees of winter, on a bus with that little window. Oh, I've never been there. Appreciate the Lord, don't you? Amen. He's surely been good to me. Yes. He's been better to me than I have him. Amen. I thank him for his mercy and his grace. Let's go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3, a very familiar scripture, I've preached 
out of this chapter before under the leadership of the Lord. And I feel led to, to go back there. If it's ever a time that we pressed that much harder to make it to heaven, it's now. Amen. The enemy has, <clears throat> excuse me, he's, he's amped up his game, if you will. And uh, we, need to, we need to press that much harder. Because he's trying to deceive the very elect sake if he could. But uh, <laughs> I'm reminded in the scripture what Jesus told Peter one time. He said, Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith would fail thee not. Amen. And I'm glad the Lord prayed for Peter. And I think tonight he's doing everything he can to encourage us and to help us home. Uh, so that we can make it to heaven. I want to go. I don't know about you, but I surely want to go to heaven. I want to, I want to, uh, uh, even if there was no hell, I'd still want to go to heaven. Amen. Still want to make it, uh, see that new city and make heaven my home. Amen. But Paul, he was, he was trying to encourage Timothy and he was trying to let him know how it was going to be in the last, the last days. And we know we're in wicked times. I don't have to tell you that. You can you can see that yourself. If you know anything about the Bible whatsoever, you see that we're in, in the latter times. But I want to show you through the scripture here uh, how Paul, how he, how he began to encourage Timothy and let him know it's going to be all right. You've just got to press on. And uh, as we get into the, into the scripture on down, we'll, we'll see how they withstood Moses. But God was for his people. And uh, I know we've mentioned Moses a lot lately. Jimmy has too. Amen. But I feel like we're in that, we're in that time. Amen. That, that God's getting ready to bring his people out. And uh, I'm, like Jimmy said, I'm looking for a move. I'm looking for something, amen, to happen for the true blood-bought church. Amen. I'm looking for a move to take place before the Lord calls us home. And... Uh, I, I believe that if we're ever in a time that, like the children of Israel when they was in bondage uh, uh, there by Pharaoh and the Egyptians, I feel like the church has tried to be in, to been bound down and put back into bondage uh, in a time that we're living. If they could, they would quiet us. Uh, they tried that here a couple of years ago. They tried to put. They tried to quiet the church. They tried to, uh, you know, to to uh, lock us out. But you know. You can't stop the hand of God. And when God's for you tonight, church, who can be against you? But uh, as we look into the scripture here in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1 through 9, if it be the Lord's will, if you can and able and want to stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, yeah. having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and led captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall... But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word tonight, God. We ask, Lord, that you give us the words to say to encourage your people tonight, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would anoint this flesh, God. We thank you for the holy word of God that's already anointed. Lord, I pray tonight that thy will would be done. Help us to get across that that you've given us, Lord. I do thank you and I praise you and I honor you. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen, amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. 
He, he started out, I, I, a, f- a few verses that I want to look at tonight with the Lord's help. He started out here in verse 1. Amen. He said, this know, that also, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. He, run, he done wrote to him the first, in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, and he told him, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We see all this going on. We see, amen, how that, uh, I, I read something the other day and I thought, Lord, how true it is. It is so sad to see a, pe- a preacher backslide. And, uh, and fall back out into the world. But what is even more sad is to see a preacher backslide and still stand behind the pulpit and lead a whole church astray. And we're living in that time. I, 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 there was a friend of mine sent a prayer request out the other night. And, and I thought, Lord, you, you've, the, the, way he, the way he put out that prayer request, I thought, boy, you know what to do already. You know the word is right. Beyond anything else, the Word of God is right. Amen. And uh, it's, it's through the organization that he's with. And I'm not here to badmouth nobody or nothing. But there's some changing taking place in, in some of the organizations and, 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 and the big associated churches. And I thank God for our little church. Amen. We, we, may, <coughs> we may not be big in number, but Lord, we got a lot of God. Amen. And I thank God for that. I I would rather have what we got as to have a church running 5,000 and not know half of the people there. And, uh, you know, they're they're trying to change because it's it's hate crimes and different things to preach on certain things nowadays. So the government says, but I'm going to take what thus saith the word of the Lord. And I'm going to stand for what's right because in these times that we're living in, it's no time to back down. And the devil is trying everything that he can Amen. To, 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 to grab a hold of the church. Yeah. Amen. And, and squeeze people out of it. And he wants them to fall back into the world. Amen. But Paul was letting Timothy know. He said, listen, <clears throat> the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some's going to depart from the faith. Amen. Some, this is going to happen. Timothy, do not let this catch you by surprise. This is going to happen. Amen. These things is going to take place. Amen. There's going to be those that are going to depart from the faith. Amen. Because they've gave heed to a seducing spirit or a doctrine of the devil. Well, church, I want to tell you something. That I don't know. Amen. And maybe it, it seems elementary to you. And I've had people tell me that. You're just such an elementary preacher. I said, and I tell them this. I am what I am by the grace of God. And I can only preach to you what God would give me. Amen. And, and if it's ever a time that we went back to the basics... And got, and, and, and got equipped the way that we needed to be equipped for the time that we're in. It's now. And I know I've been on the armor of God. But I'm telling you, we, uh, we as a church, we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to prevail. Amen. And if we put on the armor of God, God's with us. And we'll be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And listen, I, I, I've said this on Sunday mornings and I want to say it again tonight. It's not a physical battle. It's not a physical fight, amen, between flesh and blood. Paul, he plainly told the church at Ephesus, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we're living in this time where, the, where this seducing spirit, and I, I got to thinking about Herod and Herodias. And uh, John the Baptist was in prison. Herod had, had bound him and he, he's got him in prison. And Herodias, she said, uh, uh, Herod asked, said, what would you want me to do? And she, she said, I want to see John the Baptist's head on a platter. And the Bible said she danced a seductive dance and Herod had John beheaded. Amen. The seducing spirit came over him that he, amen, would, 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 would kill the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, that's how tempting the devil is. He wants to come in with such a seducing spirit. And I'm telling you, that's why it is so important to guard the hearts and the minds of these children. Amen. It it is so important because I'm telling you, uh, 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 
me and my brother-in-law, we uh, he was asking about one of my cousins the other day, and, and I was telling him about him. He said, wow, I never saw that coming out of him. And I told him, I said, you got to be careful. Hey, man, if you ain't careful, this world will indoctrinate you, and it'll, it'll philosoph- philosophize you, and hey, man, it'll corrupt you, and, and it'll put things into your heart and into your mind. Hey, man, and, and, it, and it, it'll go contrary to the Word of God, and then you'll go searching for another book uh, that'll that'll line up and I'm going to tell you any way you want the Bible to be wrote today you can find it because they've rewrote it many times but I'm going to stick with what I know is best amen but you see the world they they can indoctrinate things into people's hearts and and brainwash if I could say it that way and, and just simply seduce them but Paul told Timothy he said don't you let this catch you by surprise this is going to happen they're going to give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of death and I'm telling you if it's ever a time that we prayed one for another it's now because the enemy's wanting to tear us down amen the enemy's wanting to come in amen and he's wanting to he's wanting to shred us amen and he's wanting to separate us amen what can separate us from the love of God Amen. I'm telling you, we need to be knit with the Lord we need we need to be we I, I think about uh, um, Lord help me Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones. Hey man, when those bones come together, hey man, God told him, he said to prophesy that the sinew would come upon the bones to hold them together. You see, the bone cannot stay in joint if it ain't got a tendon or a ligament, if it ain't got some sinew to hold it together. And I've been a praying. I said, God, unite our little church with the sinew. Hold us together. Amen. For the evil day and the evil time that we're living in. Amen. Listen, it's happening more and more. It's getting closer and closer home. But church, I'm telling you, if God God is forced. Nobody can be against us. But we have got to stay in the word. We've got to stay in the will of God. Peter said it this way in 2 Peter 3 and 3. He said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Huh? Peter said this is going to happen. This is, this is what's going to take place in the last days. Even, even in Jesus' time, amen, and, 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 and after the crucifixion, amen, they still, Jimmy, Jimmy preached it the other night, they still tried their very best, amen, they tried their very best uh, to, to, to say that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. Amen. But church, let me tell you, I know that he's alive and he's alive forevermore. Amen. amen. But Paul, he told Timothy, he said, son, he said, don't, don't be worried. Amen. This snow that this is going to happen. The last days, perilous times is going to come. He done told him in the first letter, like I said a moment ago, amen, there's going to be those to depart from the faith. It's sad. It's so sad. Amen. The Bible teaches us this way. He said, if you see one overtaken in a fault, huh? And what did he say? He said, ye that are spiritual, try to restore such one in the spirit of meekness. Amen, we are to go after those. Amen, and it's not all on the pastor tonight. Amen, we are the body of Christ. Who in here wants to see somebody go to hell? Huh? I don't want to see nobody go to hell. I don't care what they've done. I don't care how, I don't care how bad they are. They've got a soul. And, and Christ died for the ungodly. Huh? Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. But Paul was letting him know. He told him, verse 2, 3, and 4, he said, how that man's going to act. And when he, when he speaks men, it's, it's, it's not leaving the women out. We see what's happening. We see the, the corruptness and, 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 and these things that's taking place before our very eyes. We see they're trying to be Lord over God's heritage. Amen. Come on. I, I couldn't help as I was reading this today. Amen. And I couldn't help but think about old Jezebel. Huh? How that controlling spirit come upon her. And uh, how she told them when they, when they offered up sacrifice. Amen. She told them, she said, eat this meat. And that meat was not to be consumed. But amen, she, she come against them. And she told them, she said, listen, it's going to be this way or else. She had a controlling spirit about her. And I'm not speaking bad of the women. I'm outnumbered here tonight if you didn't know that. Huh? The women's got me outnumbered here this evening. Huh? But you see that... <clears throat> that seductive, controlling spirit, amen, not only, amen, can it come upon a woman, but it can come upon a man. Come on. 
I had to go get a battery yesterday evening for one of our vehicles, and and uh, it was about right at five years old. And and nowadays, if you get five years out of one, you're doing good. And uh, and I uh, got it off little Gary out here at GNT Radiator, and we was talking, and he said, "Man, he said this whole world's in rough shape, ain't it?" And I said, "Yeah." And I said, "What it's going to take? It's going to take God." I said, "Listen." I said, I'm not against no political party. I'm not against the Republicans, and I'm not against the Democrats. I said, but what it's going to take, it's going to take God. It's going to take God back in our nation to bring us back together again. He said, you're right. I said, no, I'm not right. The Word of God is right. The Word is forever settled. Listen, church, I'm telling you, we've said this, Jimmy said it, I've said it. No man can fix what's going on, what it's going to, what it's going to take to fix uh, the problems that America is facing is for America to repent. Amen. To repent of the whoredoms that it's in. Amen. The, 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 the life it's living of a harlot and, and, and come back to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 5 in 2 Timothy 3. He said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. They got, they got the form. They look the part. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Jimmy was talking the other night, and I've seen some pictures of Dad, and I couldn't help. I took a little trip down memory lane about, uh, about some of the old pictures. But old Jimmy and Dad, boy, they, they look good in them suits. They had them uh, well, the vest on underneath the suit, and and uh, they had their uh, they had their neckties on, and I ain't against none of that, amen. But they, boy, they was looking sharp, and uh, I didn't realize. I, I honestly, if I if I'd ever heard it, I, I didn't remember it. But Mitch had put some <clears throat> recordings of Dad on our church Facebook page of uh, and YouTube of him preaching, and I I wasn't to know that was Dad, and uh, I thought, you know what, hey amen. I want to still let that fire burn inside of me. Huh? And I, as Jimmy was preaching that the other night, and, and, and as he was talking about him and Dad going down memory lane, and I think if, if, if my memory serves me correct, and Trish can correct me on this, I think Dad and Jimmy and Will was all ordained uh, at the same time. And, and uh, you know, they, the elders, they gathered around, prayed over them, and gave them the charge to go and preach the word. And, amen, uh, uh, to do, not that Jim and them called them to preach, that they done felt the call, and God com- confirmed it through the, the, through the elders. But I, I thought about all that the other night, and I thought, I thought you know, Dad's gone, and, and, uh, and Will's gone, and no doubt that probably, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy probably feels a little lonely. I told Brooke the other night, we've been praying about something. I said, I just wish I could call Dad. I just wish I could call him. It just seemed, it just seemed like he knew what I was going through already. But what did I go on to tell Brooke? I told her this. I said, but you know what? I can call on my Heavenly Father. Amen. And I can, I can depend upon him like I can my earthen father. But you see, we're living in a time where people's got a form of godliness. Listen, I'm telling you, it is, it is so... It is so needful for the church to be peculiar. In the time that we're living in, we need to be, I I mentioned it the other day, we need to be that candle that's put on a stick to shine out the light into this lost and dying world. 1 Timothy 2 and 2, listen what Paul told him. He said, for kings and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That's That's what Paul was trying to tell Timothy, he said, they're going to have a form of godliness. Amen. And he told him in the first letter, he said, this is how it's going to be. But now he's telling him, he said, they're going to have a form. But they're going to deny the power thereof. There's people that go to church, but they don't know nothing about the power of God. I'm glad I've experienced the power of God. How about you, friend? I'm glad that I, I have experienced a touch of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm glad that I... <coughs> Hey man, I'm 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 not going to be defeated by the help of God. I'm glad that I know what it's like to feel the presence of a living God. Hey man, I'm glad I can feel Him when I'm by myself, and I'm glad I can feel Him when I'm at church when people pray for me. Hey man, I'm glad I can feel Him during the singing and during the preaching. Hey man, I wouldn't take nothing for what I've got. I wouldn't take nothing. Amen. But Paul told him, he told Timothy, he said, there's going to be a time. He said, they're going to have the form, but they ain't going to know the power of God. But you know what he told him? He said, you turn away from them. 
You turn away from them. Listen, listen. The, what uh, Romans 16, 7. He said, now, Romans 16, 17. said, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division <clears throat> and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Come on. There's people that want to argue with you how, amen, the Bible is writ, wrote, written. They want to argue with it. But you know what he said? He said to mark them and avoid them. They some people you cannot, you cannot, amen, get them to understand the Word of God the way it was wrote. Amen. Paul told them, he said, listen, they're going to have a form of godliness. Amen. But they're going to deny the power thereof. He said, for this, for this sort are they which crept into the houses and they left, led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. Listen what Jude Verse 4 says, he said, For there are certain men crept unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, amen, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. Yes. Listen, this is happening. People are denying God. Listen, I'm going to tell you this, and, and you already know this. Not everybody that goes to church is going to go to heaven. I want to share a dream with you I had Saturday night into Sunday morning. I had a dream. Several people, was on a, we was on an airplane. And uh, I, I, the dream didn't make no sense, but I got to praying about it, and the Lord began to show me some things. And the Bible said to tell a dream as a dream. And uh, on this airplane, there were several people. And there were some people that I knew and a lot of people I didn't know. But all at once, somebody come in. And I could not see their face. But they started saying, you, you, you. And went around to several and said, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. You got to leave. Your luggage ain't been, your luggage ain't ready. You got to leave. Amen. And then others, others were still sitting there. And in this dream, there was those that were saying, asking this person, said, am I ready? Oh, you're good. This person told them, said, you're good. you got your possession. And I didn't understand this for a moment because to me it felt like a carnal dream. Amen. And then I, I got to praying about this Sunday and into Sunday night and early in the wee hour morning and Monday morning. Hey, man, the Lord began to deal with me. He said, there's those that profess that they've got what it takes. Amen. And they try to carry their God with them. He said, but you must possess me. Amen. You must have my possession inside of you. Amen. And I thought, Lord, you, you was trying to show me something and I thought it was carnal. Amen. But you see, so many are trying to carry God as a side bag. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You know, when you, I've never been on an airplane, but they say you can check one bag, which means you can carry it on the plane and you can put it in an overhead compartment. Amen? Or that's a carry-on. All the other bags have to be checked. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I've got something inside of me that I can carry all the way to heaven. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. I can't take none of the earthen possessions with me. I know when dad died, mom, mom wanted him dressed in this and dressed in that. And dad wore a toboggan all the time. Amen. He got, uh, when he lost all of his way, he, he got cold natured and, and mom wanted gloves on his hand. But none of that, none of that mattered. What mattered the most is what he possessed on the inside. Amen. Huh? And I believe the other night that was the Lord. Hey man, and, and yes, it looked like an airplane. Hey man, but he said, you ain't ready and you ain't ready. You've got too much luggage. Hey man. And then others would question, am I ready? Is everything okay? He said, yes, what you've got, you possess. And I'm glad tonight I possess, hey man, a living God inside of me. Hey man, and I'm glad that the Holy Ghost has come in and he's took up his abode inside of me. And I'm glad tonight that, hey man, he's, I'm his temple and he, he can dwell there. And I, I want him to clean on me and I want him to check on me. And I, I, I want him, when he finds something that's wrong, I want him to let me know so that I can make it right. I don't want to just have a form of godliness because there's many today that's got a form of godliness. One preacher said it like this, said they ain't got enough power of God to heal a gnat bite. Amen? Bless the Lord. 
Come on. I'm glad we have got, amen, like I said a while ago, we might be small in number. We might just be a little old country church. Hey man, I remember up in the holler here just last year we had a service and, and one of the preachers right here in this very county was in that service and he said, I was glad to be in an old time Pentecostal service. Church, I'm telling you, this is what I like. Amen. Amen. Listen, I don't have to have the fancy Amen. Decorations. I don't have to have the fancy lights. I don't have to have the strobes, the smoke machines. Amen. Like Jimmy said the other night. Amen. Listen, if there is any smoke that come in, I hope it would be a cloud of, of witness that come before us. Amen. That we could say, surely the presence of God is in this place. I've heard them talk about, amen, in days gone by, how that the, how that they was like a, 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 a smoke or a fog would come into the to the sanctuary there where they were amen we're having meeting church he is still the same God I want to have the goods amen I don't want I don't want to depart from the faith I don't want to deceive myself and I sure don't want to deceive others I am what I am by the grace of God huh listen we're living in a time people are going to do their very best to try to deceive us oh you don't you ain't got to live it that close I tell you what, you let me live it how I feel I need to live it. Huh? You let me live it how I feel I need to live it. I've heard people tell me this. I can't believe y'all have service four times a week. Huh? And you know what? And I think about days gone by. I, they used to have Friday night meeting too. Wasn't that youth service at one time? They had Friday night youth service? Huh? Church, I'm telling you. Listen, we've made time for everything else, but we don't make time for God. Come on, somebody. Huh? Well, y'all just wear yourselves out going to church all the time. Listen, I'd rather be in the presence of the Lord. What else is there to do? Huh? Come on. I'd rather be in the house of God with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Feeling the presence of a living God dwelling in the midst of his people. Amen. Than to be doing anything else in this world. There is nothing in this world that can compare to an encounter with God. That's what the problem is. They profess they know God, but they've never, they've never had an encounter with God. Right, Lord. Amen. Listen, verse number 8. He said, now it's Janus and Jambres. I I'm, I'm, guess I'm pronouncing those right. Which stood Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Amen. If you go back to Exodus, there in Exodus 7, uh, chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9. Amen. When, when God, first of all, in, in chapter 7, I believe it was, Moses, God come to Moses and Aaron and he told him, he said, I want you to go before Pharaoh. Amen. And I want you to show him that I am real, that I am the Lord God, that I am the I am. Amen. And he told Aaron, he said, Aaron, I want you to take the staff. And he said, in the presence of, uh, of, of uh, well, who's the Egyptian we're talking about? Pharaoh, <laughs> in the presence of Pharaoh, he said, I want you to cast your rod down. Amen. And he said, it'll turn into a serpent. Amen. So they went. The Bible said uh, Moses was fourscore and Aaron was fourscore and three years old. And they went into the presence of, God, uh, the presence of Pharaoh and they cast, Aaron cast down his rod and it turned into a fire. The Bible said a serpent. Amen. Amen. And Pharaoh, he said, hey, I've got some magi magicians that can do the same thing. That's who these are. This is who Paul is talking about here. This, this Janus and Jambres, amen, as they withstood Moses, amen, when, when Pharaoh would call for the magicians, this is who he would call. And they came, amen, and they turned their rods into serpents as well. But you know what? God still showed himself, amen, real because, amen, he, let, he allowed Aaron's rod to devour the serpents of the magicians. Amen. Huh? Come on, you can, you, can, you can read on through Exodus there, all the different plagues. Pharaoh would call for the magicians. Amen, he would call for, for these, amen, that had a, a devils what they had. Amen. And, uh, and, and, just off the top of my mind, the, the frogs. Amen. God told uh, Moses, He said, You tell them that the frogs, Amen, the river done turned to blood. 
The fish done died. There was such a stench in the, in, in the land. It, it could not be uh, smelled of. They were searching for water. The water couldn't be drunk. Hey man, now here the frogs come out. They're coming out of the water. They're all over the land. They've in the houses. They're on the beds, the Bible said. Hey man, and, Mo, and, and uh, uh, Pharaoh, he said, I've got magicians that can do the same thing. Hey man, but I'm telling you one thing that they couldn't do. Hey man, when God told Aaron, he said, I want you to take your rod and I want you to smite the ground. And he said, the dust of the ground, he said, it's going to turn into lies. Hey man, and the magicians, they could not do that. Church, I'm telling you, God will only allow the devil to go so far. Hey man, I don't want to, I don't want to be led away. I don't want to have a form of godliness and I sure don't want to be on the devil's side. Hey man, and God will come in and He's going to move for His people. He is going to move when enough is enough and He's seen. Hey man, listen, I want to tell you this tonight. There's more for us than they are against us. You hear me? There's more for us than they are against us. Don't you believe everything you see and you hear? The only thing I tell you that you can put confidence in today is the Word of God. Huh? This Word will never fail you. But can I tell you tonight, there is more for us than there is against us. Amen. And when, and when the magicians come in and they begin to smite the dust, it will not turn in the lies. And they said, we can't do it. Church, I'm telling you, amen, the devil tries to imitate God all that he wants. Amen. But Paul was letting Timothy know. He said, son, don't be, don't be weary. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't Listen, he said, there's going to come a time. Amen. Perilous times is going to come. Men's going to be lovers of their self. Amen. They're going to be traitors, heady, high-minded, bolsters, proud, blasphemy. They're going to be all these things. They're going to have a form of godliness. There's going to be those that will creep into the houses, amen, and try to deceive people. He said, but I want you, amen, Timothy, to be encouraged, amen, because there is a real God. Huh? Friend, let me tell you tonight, there is a God in heaven. And I'm glad that I know who He is tonight. Amen. As Janice and Jamrys, amen, as they, as they withstood Moses, amen, Paul told Timothy, he said, don't be afraid. You ain't got nothing to fear. Hey Amen. They resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Hey Amen. That's what he told him. That's what Janus and Jambres, Jambres is, was all about. They was against the truth of God's Word. They were simply against anything that was of God. But what did verse 9 tell us? He said, But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. You know, if you go back and you read there in Exodus, when God told Moses and Aaron, He said, I want you to go to Pharaoh. He said, I want you to, I want you to let him know to let my people go. I want you to go in and I want you to let him know they've been in bondage too long. Moses wasn't the one of the most proper speech. Amen. But he was a man that God could trust. And I, oft times, I've read it and I've read it. And I've read it and read it. But I go back and I still can't comprehend why God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Huh? Why didn't he just let him go on the first try? But you want to know why? He wanted Pharaoh to know there was a living God. Amen. Huh? All the plagues that came, amen, upon Egypt. Finally, the death of the firstborn. God, God told Moses, he said, I'm going to send the death angel. I'm going to send the death angel into the camp. Amen. He said, all the firstborn, they, all the firstborn males are going to die. Amen. And God, God told Moses, he said, you tell, you tell my people that if they'll take the blood of a virgin lamb, amen, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, and they'll take that blood and they'll smear it over the lintel and on the doorpost. He said, when the death angel comes and it sees the blood, it'll know to pass over. Huh? Friend, we need the blood applied to our life. Amen. Jimmy said it the other night. Come on. We're living in a time 
Ah, oh, there's, there's this and there's that. There, people say God's moving here and God's moving there. Amen. People said that, uh, 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 profess to be Jesus. Listen, I'm going to tell you, there's only one Jesus. There was only one Jesus. Don't be deceived. God ain't going to tell us nothing contrary to what the book says. Huh? He's not going to give no, amen, there's no private interpretation given. He's not going to tell somebody that he's coming back on such and such day and withhold it from everybody else. The Bible plainly says no man knows the day nor the hour. It's simple as that. But we need to be ready. and Have that blood applied to our life. Like Jimmy said the other night, and I want to reiterate it, if you ain't got the blood, you need the blood of Jesus amen. applied to your life. That's the only thing that will blot out the sin. That's in your life is the blood. Amen. I've tried my best this evening. Hope it's been a blessing to you. Hope you understood. Amen. What I was trying to get across. Amen. I know tonight there's others that can probably out preach me. But that's okay. I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. I, don't, uh, I don't try to be something that I'm not. I'm no theologian. I'm just an old hillbilly boy. Amen. But you know what? I am thankful for the grace of God. I'm thankful for that it's in my life. Because had it not been for God's grace and His mercy, I'd be lost in a devil's hell. Amen. As they get us a song tonight, amen. We want to give you the opportunity to pray. If you, amen, want to join around the altar and pray, pray there at your seat wherever tonight. Amen. At the, like Will used to say, Big Jim's altar is always open. I've said this before, Little Jimmy's altar is always open too. Amen. The altar is always open, church. Whatever you have a need, just bring it to the Lord. Don't be, don't be so worried about what's going on. Just know that you're trying your best to make heaven your home. We can't do nothing to stop it. But I know a man who can. I know a God in heaven who sits high and he looks low. Amen. And I want you to know this tonight. God's going to deliver his people. God will deliver his people. Amen. Like Jimmy said the other night, these people that, were, that no doubt were in this bondage, we're born into bondage. All the old ones that, that were taken captive, they done died off. These people were born slaves, and they didn't know what freedom was all about. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad I know what freedom's all about. Freedom in the Lord. Amen. As she sings tonight, the altar's open if you need to pray. God bless. Oh, uh-huh.